Welcome to our training on hazard communication for the construction industry. Your right to know about the chemicals you work with. In this course, you'll learn some basic information about how to use labels and safety data sheets. Chances are you're not terribly excited to be taking this hazard communication course. But hazard communication is an important topic, which is why your company is asking you to use your valuable time to take this training. So why does hazard communication matter? The best way to explain is by telling you a true story. One afternoon, an employee was using paint remover in a small space. Although she didn't know it, the paint remover she was using was a hazardous chemical. Her company did not have a hazard communication program, so her company hadn't told her about the potentially dangerous health hazards of the paint remover. She didn't realize that she needed to protect herself by wearing gloves long sleeves, and respiratory protection. She also should have been using a ventilation system. Unfortunately, she inhaled vapors from the chemical and got it on her skin, where it was absorbed into her body. Sadly, she was found dead five hours after beginning to use the product. Take a moment to think about how hazard communication might have prevented this tragedy. If she had known that the paint remover was potentially hazardous, what would she have done differently? If she had known how to protect herself from exposure, would she be alive today? Nothing is certain, but having the right knowledge might have made the difference between life and death. That's why we have hazard communication programs, and that's why you're taking this course today. After completing this training, you will be able to identify where and how to use hazard warning labels and know what information is in a safety data sheet. Check the manufacturer or distributor label for the product name or identifier. Note that the hazardous ingredients are listed in parentheses where appropriate. Manufacturer and distributor applied labels are strictly regulated. There is somewhat more flexibility for labels you apply at the job site, for instance, when filling smaller containers. These symbols are called pictograms. They include graphic elements to convey information to help you identify hazard classes, transportation requirements, or toxicity. The red frame is required to increase recognition. Please note that OSHA pictograms do not replace the diamond-shaped labels required by the U.S. Department of Transportation for the transport of hazardous materials. Drag the correct meanings onto each pictogram. It's okay if you aren't sure. We'll explain the answers on the next page. Note that some pictograms have more than one meaning.
These symbols are called pictograms. They include graphic elements to convey information to help you identify hazard classes, transportation requirements, or toxicity. The red frame is required to increase recognition. Please note that OSHA pictograms do not replace the diamond-shaped labels required by the U.S. Department of Transportation for the transport of hazardous materials. Drag the correct meanings onto each pictogram. It's okay if you aren't sure. Please take a moment to review the correct answers. Remember that you can always refresh your memory about the different pictograms and their meanings on OSHA's website. The signal word indicates the severity of the hazard. Danger indicates more severe hazards than warning. Only use one signal word per label. Labels must also include physical and health statements. These statements describe the nature of the hazards of a chemical, including the degree of hazard.
Labels will contain precautionary statements. There are four types of precautionary statements. Prevention, response, storage, and disposal. These statements provide information on how to safely use the chemical to prevent exposures. What response should be taken if exposed to the chemical, if a fire occurs, or if a material is spilled? How to safely store the chemical? And any special disposal considerations for the chemical? Labels must include the name, address, and telephone number of the manufacturer or distributor in case you have additional questions. Pictograms, signal words, and hazard statements should be located together on the label. The actual label format or layout is not specified in the GHS. What information can you find on a chemical's label? Labels need to be legible so that people can read them. They also need to be in English. They may be in other languages as well, but English is required. Labels should be prominently displayed so that anyone can easily identify the contents. Chemical spills are one way that labels may become illegible. In addition to replacing illegible labels, learn how spills are happening. There may be environmental and worker exposure concern to solve. You may need protective equipment to handle containers coated with chemical residue. The GHS classification system rates hazards from 1 to 5. In this case, 1 signifies the greatest risk and 5 signifies the least risk. This is the opposite of the NFPA and HMIS hazard rating systems that you may still see around the job site. Companies may choose to label workplace containers with the same label with which they were shipped or with alternatives that meet the requirements of the standard. Alternative labeling systems such as the NFPA and HMIS are still permitted for workplace containers. Workplace containers include all spray bottles and other smaller containers into which bulk materials have been transferred. Hazard severity ratings and other differences can cause dangerous confusion. Think about what might happen if someone believed a chemical wasn't flammable when it was actually the most flammable thing on earth. Refer to your job site's written program to learn how chemicals are labeled where you work. Apply a job site label if you transfer materials into smaller containers. The chemical manufacturer, importer, or distributor, with the first shipment and any time the information changes, must provide safety data sheets. If no SDS has been received for a hazardous chemical, your company must contact the supplier, manufacturer, or importer to obtain one and maintain a record of the contact. Your company must obtain an SDS before you use any hazardous chemicals. Companies can provide SDSs in additional languages, but English is required. Your company must make SDSs readily accessible. Your company has flexibility to determine how this will be accomplished and may provide the data sheets via paper copies, computer terminal access, or some other means of providing readable copies on site.
there is a specific 16-section format required for safety data sheets. Identification of the substance or mixture and of the supplier, hazards identification, composition or information on ingredients, first aid measures, firefighting measures, accidental release measures, handling and storage, exposure controls and personal protection, physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, toxicological information, ecological information, disposal considerations, transport information, regulatory information, and other information, including date of preparation or last revision. Select the link to view a safety data sheet for a sample chemical. True or false? This chemical is a health hazard. True or false, this chemical is a physical hazard. What should you do if a co-worker splashes this chemical onto his or her skin? If there is an accidental release of this chemical, what should you do? True or false? The only personal protective equipment you should wear while working with this chemical is an apron and boots.
True or false? This chemical is considered a hazardous waste after disposal. Workers have both a need and a right to know the hazards and identities of the chemicals they are exposed to when working. You should now be able to identify where and how to use hazard warning labels and know what information is in a safety data sheet.